Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Eduard Toda podcast. We have been on hiatus because uh, the IRD comes knocking, all right? They, you can run, but you can't hide. That's what I've been told. So uh, fix all those problems, all right? They didn't get the joke when I said them, uh, I just told them, uh, I'm sorry I can't pay my taxes because of Ligma. So yeah, that was a problem. It's all done. It's all fixed. We're not going to jail. It's, it's all good. So to celebrate the return of the podcast, I figured I would do a top 10 magicians to watch, okay? Now, this isn't my top 10 magicians of all time, although the, the, the list is very close. There's a Venn diagram of top 10 magicians of all time and this list. But in this, in this list, I, I figured I would talk, I would kind of go through, if you're a, if you're a guy that doesn't, like, person that doesn't do magic, haven't had much exposure to magic, you've kind of come across this podcast and you're kind of like, oh, that's kind of interesting. You know, all these concepts are cool. I want to see more magic. I want to like look at more magic, right? Most people know of Chris Angel. Most people know of Dynamo. Um, and that's probably, if you're going to go to magic and you don't know anything, it's probably what you're going to search up, right? So here's some magicians that you should look at and you should watch uh, if you don't, if you're not into magic, if you're not balls deep into magic like I have been, all right? So uh, with that in mind, let's get right into it, okay? The top 10 magicians you should watch right after this podcast. Don't pause the podcast and open the thing, right? Listen to the podcast, okay? Give me that watch time and then open up these magicians, all right? So at number 10, and again, to be honest, these guys, you could put them in any order. Uh, I put them in this order on a couple things, right? Like some of them, based on how much I've watched. Like, if I've watched a shit ton of this guy's content and I think it's cool for non-magicians to watch, I'd put them at number one. And if I've watched less than a shit ton at number 10, but again, they're a little bit interchangeable. So, at number 10, coming in hot, all right, Pen and Teller. I'm kind of cheating. I guess that's 11 and 10 because there's two magicians there, but it's a double act, so I think it's fair enough. The reason I put them at 10 and not higher up the list is just because I feel like they're pretty well known. Like, if you don't know Chris Angel, Dynamo, you, I mean, sorry, if you know Chris Angel, you know Dynamo, chances are you know Penn and Teller. And yeah, so I feel like they're quite well known if you, yeah. And also I feel like their stuff is kind of transcends magic as well. You know, they do a lot of stuff. Like they did, I remember they did some stuff on anti-vax stuff. So you might know them from other things. But let's just check check them out. Let's see what Amy has prepared for. I don't know any of these clips, by the way. All right, I'm reacting to them for the first time. I just told Amy, like, yo, these are the magicians we want to see. Put together something. So let's see. All right. Young Penn and Teller. Let's go. Now, very, very is, carefully, uh, pour the rats into the cage. I haven't seen this clip. Now, you want to pour them really gently so you don't hurt the rats. I want to point out that once the rats are in the cage, the trick is essentially done. Piece of cake, no more work to do. We are playing at the Wilshire Theater, and there, Richard Franklin, our producer, has asked... Oh, I know, I have seen this. No this is hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Live show. We only use vermin on TV. Well, I bet the card is found by now. Yup. All you gotta do is open the cage... And take the credit. Is that your card? <laughs> the three of clubs from room 101. My name is Penn Gillette. My partner, Teller. We're Penn and Teller. That is pretty funny. They've always been, like, real good at taking something pretty simple and making it a big spectacle, you know? And I think that's what's interesting about them um, as magicians. Like, a lot of this stuff they do... Like, I saw one... He did. They did on like some morning show, right? And the trick itself, whatever, right? But Teller was sitting down and like lying down on the couch at a morning show and like sleeping essentially. And they were like, "What's going on? What's going on?" And Penn does this whole selection process. Uh, yeah, pick a card, whatever. Throws cards out. Uh, can't get the card. He can't get the card. He can't get the card. And then at the very end, it's like Teller, help me out here. And he wakes up and he's got like uh, contact with in his eyes with the three of clubs or whatever he, you know, whatever the card that they picked. 
So they're really good at taking something really simple and like performing it really well and performing, you know, like making that performance like the main stage of the thing. And I feel like, especially if you're not in really deep into magic, that's kind of like the entertainment factor is what you want to watch magic for, right? You don't really care about the 15th version of the same trick that has been done since 1993. You know what I mean? Like you don't care about that. You just care about entertaining stuff, right? And I think all of this stuff is really good. And nowadays, I mean, these guys have, you know, like a whole warehouse of engineers working for them, creating stuff for them. So you can see how entertaining they were early on. These were when they, you know, when they were young and stuff, but they've only gotten better and they've only gotten bigger and crazier, right? So Penn and Teller, you can't go wrong with watching anything they've done, to be honest. Like there's really no, yeah, highly recommend. All right, at number nine, drum roll, drum roll. This guy is fascinating because even for magicians, this guy's a killer, all right? I don't know which uh, routine we're looking at today, but he is an absolute killer, even for magicians. Like, this, a lot of the stuff I've seen of his has just fooled the shit out of me. So at number nine, you got to check out Mario Lopez. Let's see. Ah, yeah, the classic. I see, yeah. This is a classic, classic routine. I think this is the one that he he became famous with uh, early on. It's just... His style as well is so... Um, turn this music down a little bit because it's not really important. Like, his style is so... I like this style of, of performing magic where the magic is happening and the magician doesn't know about it. The problem is a lot of magicians try to do that and it never like comes off right. You know what I mean? Like it's it's obvious that the magician's doing it. Mario Lopez, great um, great routines like that. That's the one that I think got him famous. That went viral initially, and like I'm sure you can find uh, you know that that's been kind of exposed and stuff like that. So the trick itself there is not like you know the most mind blowing stuff, although it looks so visual. But yeah, his performance is just like always the magic is happening to him as opposed to him doing the magic. And I, I, th I find that really cool. Um, I've tried to do perform in that way and it's really hard because the magic has to be so clean and you can't be seen doing anything. If you're seen doing something and then you act surprised, it just kills the whole that whole that whole uh, approach. So you need to have clean, clean magic. And there's, yeah, if you, so that, that, that was a good one to watch, but also watch the, uh, I think he has one called, I don't know what it's called, but it's a, it's like a salt routine. Mario Lopez salt routine. Insane. You have to check it out. All right. So at number eight, this is a classic favorite of mine. I, when I first discovered this guy, I was all over him. Um, I cannot believe i still can't believe what the hell is going on in these videos at number eight tom mullica rest in peace all right check this guy out he is insane all right here we go my favorite routines one of my favorite routines of all time This is just like absor absurdism magic. Like it's not, I don't even know if it's, the magic aspect is just like, what is going on? And the theatrics of that smoke and boom. Is it the theatrics of that smoke covering his face and then it, it, it like clears out and then boom, four, four cigarettes come out. Like it's insane. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was, he did that in between a card trick. I remember this. It's so funny. Now you can change. So he will, he like gets the card chosen or something and he's like, do you want to change your mind? No. And then he does this whole cigarette thing and he, he carries it on. He does it for another minute or something and it just keeps repeating that and like getting more and more cigarettes come out. And the, the crazy thing is when they come out, 
they're lit. He keeps he keeps puffing them. So, so it's like, is this guy burning the inside of his mouth or what? Like I've heard that he does he did actually end up burning his mouth, but it seems like surely not. Surely there's a way. But how the hell does he do it? Right? Like I still I still get fooled by that. Like how in the hell is he not? Is he keeping them lit? And not in absolute agony <laughs> every time he performs this goddamn trick. Um, but yeah, Tom Melica, I think he oh, did he die of a, of of cancer? Like like people who were kind of on on this video were like, oh, he's gonna he's gonna have cancer or whatever. But I'm pretty sure when he was performing these, he was using like herbal cigarettes, you know, so he wasn't actually smoking tobacco. Because you imagine the nicotine <laughs> levels of that, like you know, s smoking. 10 cigarettes at once. Um, but yeah, rest in peace, man. That guy was an OG, absolute killer. Now, at number seven, honestly, I've only ever seen one thing this guy's ever put out. Okay, so this is an interesting one on the list. But the only reason I put it on here is that it's so unique. Okay, so when, I, when I'm thinking like, all right, I need, a, I need to recommend some magic for people to watch. Okay. And I recommend, you know, all of these people on the list, like Penn and Teller, you can just go on YouTube, find any routine of theirs, it's killer, right? Uh, Mario Lopez, find any routine he's ever performed on any game, any, any show, a America's Got Talent or whatever that he's been on, killer, right? Tom Molica, find any old tapes, he's doing crazy cigarette shit, killer. This next one is is a show, is like a like a visual, not a show, like a like a movie, okay? Like a, like an actual performance that's filmed, okay? So there's only one thing I've ever seen him do. But if you want a more artsy, theatrical performance, a theatrical, magical thing that makes you think and makes you feel, right? I don't really like to feel things. I want to fucking... <laughs> I want to forget my problems. But if you want to feel things, if you want like a, a journey, all right, this guy is going to give it to you. And he's so unique in it as well. Derek Dalgaudio. Okay. I don't even know how to describe the show he put out. He put out a, a special called Derek Dalgaudio in and of itself. Okay. Look that up. I believe it's on like Neon or something. Do you remember Disney Plus Neon? I don't know if, if we, I'm pretty sure I watched it. Netflix. I feel like it wasn't on Netflix. But anyway, I'm sure you can find it somewhere. Um, so his his thing was basically he did the same show, I think for like a whole year in New York, right? Every single day with a different audience. And without giving anything too much away, every performance he did linked into the next one. So every time, every time he did a show, one person from that show had to come back for the next day's show to do something. And then it all links back and forth, back and forth that whole year. And it culminates in that last performance. And it like closes everything up. Like it is the biggest magical project in terms of like art and theater and, and writing. And it's just like, it just blows my mind how far someone can take a standard magic show. Like come watch me perform. Right. Um, so if you want to have your mind blown in that way, if you're a bit more of a sophisticated, uh, aristocrat type of person, if you like opera and, and poetry or some other <laughs> shit like that, you're going to like Derek Del Coucher in and of itself. All right. Um, absolutely beautiful. Let's see what the clip is. I don't even know. Let's see. Imagine a guy sitting at a table, just dealing some cards. You don't really have anything to think other than he's bored and he's, you know, throwing cards into a pile. But what changes that? Beautiful. If you turn the top Very card face clean. up, all of a sudden, it's not so simple. It's a guy practicing. And he's not just a guy Very sitting at a clean. table, he's a guy who so has consistent. a skill set. He's up to just something. Consistent. There's these two dialogues running parallel with one another, one that they can see and one that's implicit. And it's just knowing when to reveal that second dialogue that transforms a story. So maybe we could do something like that. Great. Let's shoot that. Yeah. So that's that that that's actually a good, pretty good little teaser because 
that sort of narrative where he he's I can't even rem- like it's so it's got so many layers to it that I can't even remember the whole show, but it just like the, he he plays around with this idea of like the spectator, the audience, the uh, the way people see themselves. Like there's so many layers to this show that like I want to say it's the best show that's ever been put out. In the sense that like it's it's just so deep, you know. It's not my favorite type of show to watch. Like personally, there's there's people on this list that I would rather watch personally, but. When you think of like how far can someone push a magic show, this is at the absolute brink. Um, so Derek Del Gaudio in and of itself, you got to at least like tr- see it. Just see it. Just see it, man. It's, it's fucking mean. All right. Number six. I've been talking about this guy for a while um, and I think he's very underrated. Um, I think he's just really, really creative and he has like this Instagram, TikTok page, something like that where he's just constantly putting out crazy ideas. And I think for magicians, this is crazy because he's constantly innovating. But I think he does it in a way that even if you don't follow magic, you can be like, God damn, this guy's like just constantly putting out new cool stuff all the time, always working, so likable. And that is Jackie Yu. Let's check it. Let's check him out. I've been singing this guy's praises for years now. I've been saying he's underrated, but I think people have started catching on that he's actually good so let's see what uh what this clip is oh no let's uh open it with dlc let's see what this clip is ah yep what i have four cards in my hand one two three four cards and this is glass table watch here if i spread the card like this beautiful one card pass through the table oh my now I have three cards. See, one, two, three cards, and glass table. Watch here. Grab a card. <laughs> pass through the table. Now I have two cards here. One, two cards, and glass table. See? Oh, oh my gosh! And now this is last card. Oh, He's just taken oh, the Instagram magic see? to a whole nother level. <laughs> see? Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he. I mean, you know, like guys like Shin Lim and stuff like that, where they kind of normalize this idea of performing to the camera. And I think Jackie just took that and ran with it to a point where even though I've obviously watched it enough to kind of understand the concepts that's that are going on, everything is thought out. It's so clean that I can't even see anything. Like I can't, I, I just... I just know what he must be doing, but it's like, it's so goddamn clean. And he comes up with that. It seems like on a daily basis, he'll just come out with something that I'm like, what the hell is that? Very good. Very good performer. If you haven't checked out his Instagram, definitely go check it out. Um, you're going to have a lot of fun with that. So uh, that was number six. All right. Number five, we're back to really good performers. All right. Again, we've talked about sort of how yeah, Penn and Teller, aren't necessarily like the most technically, don't get me wrong, all right? They do some technical shit. Um, but like, you know, when Penn's doing a card trick, he's not going to, he's not going to blow your mind with the, with the, with the slat of hand techniques. All right. But, but the performance of it, the, the way they will, you know, play it up is amazing. And I think no one plays up more than this next magician. All right. We're talking about Piff the Magic Dragon. Who would have thought that an adult performer dressed as a fucking dragon would be actually good. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Piff the Magic Dragon. This clip, I think, was on America's Got Talent by the looks of it. Let's take a look. Mr. Piff, what have you got to say for yourself? Oh, Heidi, he says he's very sorry. He says he's on hunger strike. He says no food, no card. Don't tell me the card is in this thing. Put the card in your hand. Mm. Don't move. I'll go in. <laughs> Inside the food. Uh-uh. <laughs> Yo. Kiss a real magician. Oh, oh, nice and clean for you. Oh this is for you, Liz. <laughs> so good. And like the okay, obviously the 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 suit, I mean the um the suit. 
the costumes are kind of ironic, right? He's he's taking the piss. And then he's got that cute ass dog, but he he's got like a deadpan delivery. Um just kind of sort of always sarcastic, you know. So that that dichotomy of like basically a kid's magician look and clearly an adult performance is is what I think sells this. But the thing is his magic is freaking amazing. Like it's good stuff, you know. Uh, like heaps of the stuff he's done has fooled the shit out of me. And the fact that you're being fooled by a fucking dragon is, <laughs> is beyond, <laughs> is beyond, uh, annoying, but Piff the magic dragon, every time I see him, he, he's really comes out with something great. I think he has a res residency in Vegas now, like absolutely deserved, right? Like absolutely. If you're going to watch some, uh, pretty funny magic and actually good magic, Piff the magic dragon, check him out. All right. So. Number four, I don't even think I need to sing this guy's praises, but I will anyway. Uh, again, I ha to be honest, I haven't seen that much of him, but everything I've seen is amazing. Everything I've heard about people who have seen his shows has been great, right? Dev Sherman, um, he said he went to his show and it was just like absolutely the best magic show. I don't know if he said the best magic show he's ever seen, but he probably would would put his money you know in, in that in that direction. So. Number four, Mac King, the greatest comedian, comedy magic, uh, comedy magician of all time. I think no one could argue with that, really. Let's see. He'd say, uh, yeah, ah, two the rope exactly trick. Exactly equal pieces. Uh, mine are not even close to equal. My grandpa's were equal like that. I'll start over. It has two ends and a center. Uh, while you're at home right there, you watch this end of the rope. I'm watching this one over here. You're watching this one, remember, but it's over here with the other one. So we have a piece of rope. It has two ends and a center. He's so the clean ends are here, it. of course. The center is down here, but if we take the ends off, you can't find the center. <laughs> no one knows. No one knows where the center is till we put the ends back. There it is. He's so clean right. with it. It's it's such a it's like an old school. T um, it's all it's very classic routine. Um, but when I was I was actually I performed this routine a, a version of this routine at the last something magic, which is like a kind of an open mic magic night that we do to to work on new material. And I was watching him for inspiration. Um, I think what really separates his routine out from you know a lot of the other ones is the is the end is the is the closer. That closer is killer, man. And I. I was looking at it and I was like, man, I can't do that. <laughs> I can't do that, you know? So, um, but yeah, everything he does is, is just, just clean, like good magic, you know? And it's, he's got that kind of harmless persona too, where he's fooling you, but you don't really give a shit because he's so nice, you know? It's very hard to hate that guy. All right. At number three, we're getting into the uh, championship rounds here. Number three. I uh, debated putting this guy on and not, you know, but I think he's probably my favorite mainstream magician. And I think some of you guys that have followed my YouTube channel for a while might kind of already know who this is. I'll just go out and say it. David Blaine. Yeah, yeah. No, look, especially in the, the latest stuff he's been putting out, you know, the, the Real Magic special. I think the special before that was also decent. Uh, the stuff he's been putting out recently has been absolutely insane. Okay. And it's not the fact that like, obviously, you know, he's used edits and stuff and a lot of magicians were pissed at him back in the day, stooges, whatever. Right. Okay. Fair enough. Yep. His, his, his younger days were a bit, a bit of a, a cash grab, but the fact that he was, he's so committed like he did all the Houdini stuff, right? He the three days in ice, fucking jump off a cliff, jump off of this, uh, hold on to balloons and go above, above the, um, I don't know where the like how high he got, but you know some crazy amount, some crazy height he got, and then before he like let go and parachuted out, um, he did all this endurance stuff and tried essentially to like recreate a lot of the Houdini stuff. That, like, you know, puts him in the escapologist sort of genre. Okay, fair enough. But then he's also, like, a really good performer. Like, if you see him on Jimmy Kimmel, if you see him on, um, you know, pretty much anywhere you see him, people are reacting like crazy. And his delivery is deadpan and everything. But his persona is so much of, like, 
I'm that creepy guy that does weird shit, right? And so I feel like people connect with that in a way that don't connect with uh, like with a lot of other magicians, you know? I feel like people just enjoy his way of performing. I've definitely probably, you know, getting into magic and stuff, he's probably my favorite magician like I was trying to emulate, which was terrible because I was 12 years old going, look, watch, <laughs> look, watch, <laughs> you know? But I think he's really good. And all in his last special, Real Magic, I think what he did, and I, I actually discussed this with uh, Joe Chun, who's also pretty, he's into magic and he'll go into rabbit holes. And he said he didn't, he didn't like that aspect of it, but I think it's pretty genius. What he did is essentially, he'll do a trick that seems real, but it's not. And then he'll do a, tr a thing that's actually real and he'll pretend it's a trick. And so by blurring the lines between what's real and what's not real, it actually elevates the the level of like emotional journey or, or whatever you want to say of the tricks themselves as well. Because now you're, you're no longer being like, oh, it's a trick. Okay, cool. But it's a trick. You're questioning whether or not it's a trick at every moment. And so I feel like that now becomes like, you know, back in the day when people thought like a magician was a witch, you know, it almost brings that element back into it. And it, like no one else is doing this. No one else is doing what we're about to see because fuck that. Why the shit would I do this? Um, but that's exactly why I love it. Right. OK. Pull it out. Is that needle going through your arm? Well, pull it out and you'll see how it works. <laughs> pull it. <laughs> oh, fuck me. I don't understand. Oh, David, what have you done? Are you a maniac? This is real. Sorry, this is real. That's real. That's not a trick. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Ricky hell. is such a fucking... I don't, and that's like, that's so that's, funny because Ricky always fucks with all his friends, you know, like he's always making them uncomfortable and it's hilarious to him. And now he just had David fucking Blaine just freak him the fuck out in the exact same way, you know, like just made him so uncomfortable, <laughs> which is so good to see. Um, but that's the sort of shit, man. Like, you know, that, that was 100% going through his arm, you know? And the thing is now he could do a fake one of those and people wouldn't know if it's true or not, like, because he's done it for real. So who the fuck knows, you know? I mean, he did the bullet catch, the, the classic effect where a magician stands in front of a gun and catches a bullet in the mouth. Now that's been done fake in a fake way for, for years, right? Uh, it's, it's been done, you know, like, like Penn and Teller have done that. And it's a, it's a safe method. They've even, I'm pretty sure they've even said that it's a safe method. David was like, nah, fuck that. I'm just going to have a rifle with a laser on it on a string. And I'm just going to use a mirror to see where that laser is pointing. Make sure it's in the mouth. Like, like he has a cup, metal cup in his mouth. Make sure it's in my mouth. And then when I see it's lined up, I'm going to pull the string and the rifle will go off. And he did that live on stage for a few shows until he fucking, the cup broke in his mouth and he, he had to call it off. <laughs> Like, that's the level of shit, you know? And so if I'm going to tell someone, like, yo, watch some magic, I mean, this is going to fucking get you riled up, that's for sure. Like, wh whether you like it or not, it's going to get you riled the fuck up. Uh, so, David Blaine, watch him, 100%. E.T. stamp of approval. Now, this, at number two, all right, the, the runner-up, all right, of the uh, ET Watch This Championship is another pretty mainstream magician, arguably magician. Maybe not as mainstream in, you know, in the whole world as, as David Blaine. Uh, I think he's probably more well-known in certain parts of the world. But this guy isn't doing crazy shit to, you know, like, this. this is pure, like, actual good magical showmanship, uh, writing, directing, skill set, performance, all that thing, right? So it's 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 a it's a good magic show. I would say probably the best magic show in the world for me. Like if I had to go watch someone live, there's maybe a couple people that I would watch and this would be 
this would be the one, right? So at number two, Darren Brown. Now you could argue he's not a magician, he's a mentalist. Uh, he, if you're deep in the magic scene, you kind of know that's kind of all shit. Uh, mentalists are just a different marketing, <laughs> differently marketed uh, magician. Um, Darren Brown is an absolute killer. He's the only guy that I'll watch recordings of a stage show. Like I've seen some now because we do we do some like kind of market research with with our magic uh, something magic crew, uh, and we try to like sort of learn from from other people's shows, but. Just in my own time, if I see that Darren Brown's filmed another stage show, so just a camera at the back of the theater, not even like, you know, not not necessarily like a proper fucking, you know, like a Derek Delgaggio production. I'm just talking like, if there's a camera in the theater, I might actually watch it. And that is Darren Brown. Uh, it's hard to even see tell why he's amazing. He's just so He's just like probably the best mentalist in the world. Uh, I don't even think that's a probably. He's the best mentalist in the world. Um, let's take a look. Just don't try and help me. If you try and help me, James, it will confuse me. And it's really important I'm not confused. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, it does. All right. When I say go, just take a little while. Just take a moment just to, to take a breath and relax. And then count from one to six loudly, clearly, and slowly. And take a breath first. Go. The theatrics. Amazing. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, thank you. I'm going to set the gun to a chamber that I feel is safe. That's number, th uh, that's number three. Number three, I feel is safe. Number three, I feel Hesitation, the way he's... Each time that I pull the trigger the chamber will rotate one round. So I'm going to start by firing number three, which I feel is safe, and then four, then five, then six, and then one, and then two. Number three, I feel is safe. Number three, I feel is safe. James, will you put your ear defenders on? The way he creates like anxiety in the performance is actually masterful. Number three, I feel is safe. The hesitation in the voice that... <laughs> Even that. Fuck, man. <laughs> the spectator's got his eyes closed. Number four, I feel is safe. Number five. Oh. Do you know if he shot at that end? Uh, you cut it like right as he's about to shoot. I can't remember what he did. God damn it. See, now I'm getting an anxiety just think, just watching that clip. Clearly he didn't die, so we're, we're chilling. But um, see, the thing is, even if that was a completely fake gun, fake, like I don't know, actually, no, I, I can't, I haven't seen that full performance, so I, I don't know what's going on there. But even if that was a full gun, uh, sorry, a fake gun, fake bullet, fake everything, you can see, like, the way he's acting, the way he's the way the sp he's cr got the spectator count, which who knows why that happened, right? Like, we still don't fully understand that. The way he he sort of set everything up, and then the theatrical pull the one first one quick, the second one was slower, the third one oh he's he's having double double guessing. Maybe then he brings her back and shoots, and he's clean. Um, that creates like so much tension, and. It's the act. It's that thing that makes it entertaining, makes it believable, makes it. And he does that for everything. So okay, all right, whatever. The gun was fake, but then how did he guess that thing? And then how did he subliminally, uh, basically, uh, force this color on the whole spec on the whole audience? And then how did he do this? And by the end of it, you're like, man, this guy's got fucking powers. Like he's just not a real human. You know, it's great. It's absolutely great. Darren Brown absolutely suggests. Uh, you watch all his, his shows. He's got like a bunch of uh, yeah stage shows that are really good. Uh, I think they're online on either on YouTube or something. I, I can't remember where I saw them. But um, yeah. At number one, drum roll, the winner of this whole competition. I actually surprised myself when I put this name down as number one. And do I think it's the best thing for a non-magician to watch? 
when we have all these other magicians on the line on the lineup? I'll be honest with you, probably not. Maybe. But I I have seen every single performance this guy has online. There's not <laughs> I've seen him perform with sponge balls. Now, if you know anything about me, you know that I'm not a fan of a lot of props, like weird looking shit, sponge balls, whatever. I'm just not that big of a fan of them. I will watch this guy do anything. All right. And these are old ass videos where he's performing like close up magic to a bunch of people and, you know, in all, for all intents and purposes, this should not be the freaking number one magician to watch. I mean, you'll see what I mean in a second, but he is just so funny, entertaining, captivating. You just want to see what happens. He, he's constantly like berating the audience. It's hilarious. And he's goddamn good at magic too. And the fact that it's close up means that he's doing that shit for real. So there's no cameras, there's none of this, you know, stuff, like, it's all legit stuff, and, man, he's just, like, my favorite magician to watch, period, uh, there's a bunch of other magicians I watch for magic, like Danny Dowerty's, spoiler, he's not on the list, uh, and stuff like that, his magic is fooling me, you know, left, right, and center, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend Danny Dowerty's for, you know, the average non-magical, uh, viewer, right, but at number one, for the number one magician to watch, to drop this podcast as soon as it's finished, type this in YouTube, and watch, binge watch all the magic, is Bill Malone. Bill fucking Malone. You know what? Let's just get into this clip and see what the hell is going on, because this guy is a killer. So I'm going to go on the record saying the last <laughs> ace is exactly 20 cards from the top. Watch this. I will cut exactly 20. Better yet, you count. Take the cards, count down to the 20th card out loud, one at a time. One, one two, two, three. Wow, that's four. good. Five, <laughs> he knows the words. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 11 12, 12, 13, 13 14, 14, 15, 15 16, 16, 17, 18, 18 19. 19. Turn it over. <laughs> yes! Yeah. Bill Long Low! Bill Long Low! Bill Long Low! Yes! Oh, you guys, knock it off, you knuckleheads. Cut it out. You guys kill me. Excuse me one minute. Hold on. <laughs> Man, I don't, feel, don't laugh at me. If you're going to laugh, I'm not going to do the trick. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Stop it. I said don't laugh at me, pal. I'll knock you right off that chair, buddy. I know Mexican judo. Oh. Did you hear that? You don't know if I have a knife. You don't know if I have a gun. You don't know, you don't know what I have. Anyway. All right, here's what we're going to do. Let's try something. Your oh, that's is so good. Yeah, I mean, th the thing is, he looks like the nerdiest dude of all time, right? And so he's constantly, like, he looks like an absolute nerd that he got bullied for, like, half his life, okay? And he's just fucking doing these crazy magic, like, it's actually good close-up magic. And then the whole time, he's insulting the, the guy <laughs> he's getting to cut the deck. He's flirting with a lady to the right, which, again, is hilarious because of how he looks. Then he's turning to this guy. He's like, I'll knock you out your seat, you know? And it, like the whole time, nothing he says is congruent with how he looks and it just kills you even more. <laughs> and and like the whole time he's doing actually good magic and uh, it's hilarious. I absolutely cannot stop watching Bill Malone. I, there's literally no more content for me to watch. I've seen all, all of his stuff that he's ever put out. Um, so yeah, absolutely funny. Now, I remember a, um, what did I see? I can't remember. He was ta either talking about close-up gigs or something and he was saying that he was doing corporate corporate uh, venues and his strategy to get in before in between every trick he'll do a trick you'll get a big reaction then he does bill malone bill malone yeah baby right and he gets everyone to start doing that shit and which is a genius marketing technique because if you're at a gig and it's a bunch of tables and you know you know the guy that hired you it doesn't give a shit well, you know ah yeah we need a magician whatever and then you're just like doing your event, whatever you're planning for the next speaker or whatever it is. And you just hear like from that corner of the room, 10 people shout, Bill Malone, Bill Malone. You're like, what the hell is that? All right, cool. Ignore that. Then five minutes go by and you hear from the other corner of the room, Bill Malone, Bill Malone. Then like, then the other corner, then the other corner, then he gets half the room on this side. Then he gets half the room on that side. By the end of the night, 
literally the whole room's going, Bill Malone. And it's just like the absolute genius, you know, apparently this guy's raking it in, just doing corporate and corporate events and stuff. So I, I love this guy. I uh, absolutely love this guy. Watch his stuff. I, I don't know how you can make a class, just a, just a card trick. You know, people would say, ah, oh, another card trick. Fuck me. This guy can make anything entertaining. He can make just a card trick, like the most boring shit ever, even though it's, you know, his stuff is really good. But even if it was boring, he can make it entertaining. So that is my top 10 magicians to watch right after this. Go and check him out. I absolutely recommend it. Uh, thank you for sticking by. If you've, if you've checked in uh, to see what the hell this new episode is, I appreciate you. Um, we will be putting out more content with guests, more solo content. I just got my brown belt in jujitsu, so maybe I'll make a, uh, a little podcast about that. You know, the, the, the fucking journey. I spent more at pur- more longer at Purple Belt than all my other belts combined. So um, maybe I'll make a make a little little podcast about that at some point. Uh, if you have any like topics that you would be cool for me to cover, you know, chuck chuck them in uh, any any you know you know you can contact me anywhere. So Instagram, whatever, chuck me a DM and uh, I'll I'll, uh, I'll put that in my, in the on the list. Yeah. So thank you for sticking by. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. I don't do that anymore. I don't do the peace anymore. So I don't know what the hell I end the podcast with. But yeah, catch you guys. 